myth. The home equity loan is good for consolidation, and it's a substitute for an emergency fund. Debt consolidation makes sense. No, it doesn't. Truth. If you are in debt, here's an idea. If you have an emergency, the last thing you need to do is go further in debt. Dumb, 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 dumb. I'm going to put a home equity loan on instead of carrying an emergency fund, and then I'll be okay. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Myth. Debt consolidation saves interest, and you get one smaller payment. Truth. Debt consolidation is a con. That's why they call it debt con consolidation. <laughs> debt consolidation typically saves little or no interest because you throw a, your low interest loans into the deal. You take a no interest medical bill and roll it into the deal. You take a zero interest car payment and roll it into the deal. You take all these other lower interest things and roll them into the deal and you get the whole thing on there at 10, 11 percent as a second mortgage on your house and the aggregate of all your other debt would have been a lower rate. But you never add all that up. It's just, I want one payment. It's just not convenient. It's more convenient for me to give them more money. That's what we're saying. And here's the trick. You've got to remember, you cannot borrow your way out of debt. And that's really the spirit of debt consolidation. If I can just, if I could find a plan, I'll just borrow my way out. You cannot borrow your way out of debt. It's impossible to borrow your way out of debt. You can't dig your way out of a hole. If you're in a hole and you dig out the bottom, you're just going deeper. That's the deal. You've got to climb out of a hole. That's how you get out. And smaller payments equal to more time in debt. I, need, I just can't handle the payments, and when I debt consolidated it I, it, I was smart financially because I have a smaller payment. If you have a smaller payment, unless the interest rate is way smaller, then you are in debt longer. That's the only part of the variable that can work. The only way to have a smaller payment is be in debt longer. That's what brings the payments down. You're going in the wrong direction. Think. You can't borrow your way out of debt. Debt consolidation doesn't work. You're listening to the best in talk radio. Common sense for your dollars and cents. Up next is Jamie in Dallas, Texas. Jamie, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up? Hey, um, I just have a question regarding uh, student loans. I have quite a few of them, and I was wondering if I should consolidate all of my student loans to one payment. Ouch. How many have you got? Uh, probably about four. Wow, this is not good. Okay. It's okay to consolidate student loans. You've got to remember with federally insured student loans, you get to consolidate them just once. That's what the law says. And if rates are down, then that's the time to consolidate them. And so now is a good time to consolidate student loans because rates seem to be ticking upwards. Now, look at your rate and make sure that you're going if you consolidate, that you're going to get a lower rate. If you're paying seven now and you can consolidate and get six, that makes sense. But if you're paying six now and you consolidate and get eight, well, don't consolidate. It's easier to write four checks and pay less interest. But uh, student loan consolidation is the only time I say it's okay to do debt consolidation except to avoid bankruptcy. So get with one of the good companies that does this and make sure you get a fixed rate that is less than the total of your other rates, the aggregate of your other rates, and uh, no balloon payments, no gotchas, no variable rates. And if you lower the rate, then consolidation does make a, good, make a lot of sense. Does that help? That does. Thank you. Hey, Jamie, thank you for the call. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. We're giving you the same advice your grandmother would, only we keep our teeth in. So, our last myth. Debt is a tool. It should be used to create prosperity. The truth is the borrower is slave to the lender. You know, when I ran into this, and I really started to grasp it, it was hard for me because I got to thinking about it. Who was it taught me to borrow money? This was my college finance professor who was broke. What's wrong with that picture? A broke finance professor is like a shop teacher with missing fingers. So I have a rule. I don't take financial advice from broke people anymore. I want to do what rich people are doing. I get to be rich people. Whatever the broke people are doing, I can love them, I like them, I want to, I don't want them to help them be rich people. But I don't want to do what they're doing. If I want to be skinny, I'm not going to eat what fat people are eating. This is not hard, is it? You have to think about these things. If you want a marriage, don't go to some guy who's been married 16 times and wrote a book. Find some old couple walking along like this, been married 62 years, and she's holding him up. Find out how he did that. That's worth knowing. Take that guy to lunch. He's got some wisdom. Find winners and mimic what they're doing to win. That's how we become rich. That's how this works.
And so when you look at it, you know what the Forbes 400 is? The For Forbes 400 is the 400 wealthiest people in North America today. The Forbes 400 were surveyed. They asked the 400 wealthiest people in North America today, not your broke brother-in-law, not your beer-drinking buddy with an opinion. They asked the 400 richest people in North America, what's the most important key to building wealth? I mean, inquiring minds want to know this. You know, think about it. What they said was 75% of those replied that the number one way to become wealthy was to stay debt-free. It's the number one key to wealth building. And here's why. Your largest wealth building tool is your income. And when it's not all going out the door with someone else's name on it, you have it to do things like investing. It's your biggest deal. You take an old car payment, you take an old credit card payment, you get rid of a student loan that's been around so long you think it's a pet, and you take those payments and start putting those things into a mutual fund, you end up with money. It is the muscle of your wealth building plan, your income. But when you're handcuffed because it all has someone else's name on it, you're a slave to the lender. Myth, debt is a tool. Truth, the borrower is slave to the lender. Because when you don't have any payments, you have money. You stay in your seat. <laughs> oh, think about it. How much could you save, invest, blow, and give if you had absolutely no payments? But you know why people don't, why, why they don't get out of debt? It's because they've lost their hope. That's why they don't get out of debt. They don't really believe that they can be debt free. That's why they don't get out of debt. It's kind of like when I was growing up, my parents, we moved from the suburbs out to the country. Well, about the time I took off for college is actually when that happened. Now, out in the country in our area, it was like five acres. It wasn't like 50,000 acres, okay? But my dad, my little sister got involved in the rodeo over at the high school in the rodeo club, and she was riding a horse around the barrels for a time. Have you ever seen that? Say yes. Yes. And they bought her a quarter horse to ride the barrels. His name was Bubba. <laughs> and then they got tired of riding around the barrels, and they decided they were going to enter another event and that event was kind of like the guys have in rodeo. The guys have an event in rodeo called calf roping. And if you've seen calf roping on ESPN or if you've ever been to the rodeo or something like that, the cowboy's sitting in the saddle, the calf is released, they ride out after the calf, the lasso goes around the calf, and the cowboy, the horse is taught to stop and start backing up, cowboy ties off, jumps from the horse, runs his hand along the line, calf is running, has no idea, slack's running out. About the time the slack runs out, that head pops. Wee -nee 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 -nee. Cowboy uses that backward momentum, flips that calf upside down, ties his feet together, and holds his hands up for a time. Have you seen that event? Say yes. yes. Well, the girls have a similar event, only they don't flip and rope calves because they're too big. The calves are. So the girls flip and rope goats. <laughs> now, I know it sounds kind of funny, but they were real serious about it. Hat down over the eyes, serious about being a goat roper. <laughs> now, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Goat roping is a real sport. I mean, they were real serious about it. So we had to buy her a goat to practice on. <laughs> and since we were going to practice on him, we named him Practice the Goat. <laughs> and so what happened in the Tennessee summer heat with the humidity standing in the field about this tall, I saw them out there with the goat. They grabbed old Practice by the ears. They gave him a little boot because she's on, on the horse ready to go after him, right? And he's running out through there. He's going, man, this is great. I'm not a goat. I'm a gazelle. I am gone, baby. About that time, the rope goes around his neck. He has no idea. That, she ties off. Bubba starts backing up. She runs from Bubba down that line. That, that backward momentum, that slack runs out. She grabs that goat, flips him upside down, ties his little feet together. He says, what happened? <laughs> I thought I was a gazelle. I must be a goat. I got to tell you the truth. They did that to that goat 15, 20 times a day all summer long <laughs> to the point that they where they would flip in time they wore the grass off and there was a bare spot now if you've ever been around goats they're not real smart <laughs> but eventually old practice began to catch on <laughs> i saw him finally he's running out through there he saw that bare spot and he went stop pain right here <laughs> he finally got where he'd run out there stop and lay down 
We told her if we could get him to tie his own feet together, she could win every event. <laughs> you know what happened to old practice? Old practice lost his hope, didn't he? He got beat up one too many times, and he just quit. He just went out there and laid down. It's kind of a funny story, but really, when you think about it in perspective of our lives, it's kind of sad. Because I meet people and they run out there and they lay down, don't they? Say, oh, you're always going to have a car payment. Little man just can't get ahead. Just forget it. You can't make it. In the greatest land the world has ever known. Plus, practice had to go back to the goat pen, didn't he? And the other goats are going, ah, you're not going to make it. That's just the way it is. Take it easy, man. Don't work while you're at work. Don't try to be a winner. Mediocrity, we're just goats, man. Just take it. Just go out there and lay down. That's just how it is. You're always going to have a car payment. You can't be a student without a loan. You can't have a master without a card. That's the way it is, practice. Get over it. I got to tell you, though, I'm the goat that got away. I'm over here the other side of the bear spot. It's not really a bear spot. It's more like a mountain of dead, isn't it? And, and I've got lights over here and radios playing, music playing. We're throwing ropes across, shining, sending the Internet over there. And we're doing all this stuff, and we hear people climbing up the other side. Boom, 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 boom. We hear them on the other side of that wall. They call in. They're screaming, how do I do, how do, I do this, Dave? What do I do? Man, I'm trying it. Man, I saw, I'm doing this stuff. I'm kicking it. And see the head pop up occasionally, and occasionally one of them will drop off over here, and they call in on our talk radio show, and they tell us, Dave, I make $62,000 a year, but, Dave, I've been busting it. I've been killing it. I mean, I, I've done everything you said to do. It's been hard, but, man, I'm dead. 